Here we've got a Conover spinet piano that we're going to be tuning first thing this morning um, in this home. This gets tuned every six months or so. Um, it's uh, not terribly stable. It, uh, it's usually pretty far out of tune every six months when I come to tune it, but um, because it's every six months, what I do is uh, I don't I kind of tune it mostly where it's at um, because in the summer, in the summertime when I tune it, it uh, or late late summer early fall when I tune it, it's uh, usually sharp in pitch, and now here in the late spring it's uh, usually flat in in pitch. So um, you know, so I leave it a little flat in the spring, a little sharp in the fall. So it's kind of somewhere in between, but uh, it's um, it's a it's an okay piano for a for a little spin of piano, but um, I'm going to be tuning this up today. It's uh, nothing special, but uh, we'll, we'll get it tuning and sounding as good as we can. Our next stop today here is at a church <clears throat> that we're going to be tuning uh, three pianos at. Um, this first one here that I'm going to be tuning is a Hamilton uh, a studio piano made by Baldwin. Now, if you come across some of these Baldwin or Hamilton studio pianos, a lot of them, um, the top doesn't lift up like like in a normal piano. So this, uh, you'd come across and think that um, you're going to lift the top like you normally would, but uh, these, the whole um, the whole top and the, the front and the, and is, uh, comes up as one piece. So you want to lift down here. And when you do this, you can see that the whole thing opens up like that. Okay, now you want to make sure that when you do that, that the, um, the fall board, which is right here, we want to make sure that that's um, all the way open because they've got they've got clips that uh, hold that lock this um, this lifting part up and then well, once you've got it open, there's generally a, a prop. I'm trying to do this with, and it comes down, and then that rests right here on the frame of the piano. So. Um, so as you can see, get you in the right light here, you can see that whole top piece uh, comes up, and it's the, it's the whole front of the front where the music rack sits and everything. Um, and I'll show you these clips that uh, hold it down when the music rack is closed. They're right there, one on each. And okay, so that's why you want to make sure that the that the uh, fall board is open um, before you before you lift that up. But if you come across a Hamilton or a Baldwin studio piano. Um, that's uh, very likely how the how it opens up to get access to the to the tuning pins. So, and again, you want to watch for that for that lid prop that uh, comes down from underneath. Sometimes it's hard to see. So, um, we've got uh, this piano to tune today. This one gets tuned, oh, I would say two to three times a year. Um, so they keep it keep it up pretty good. Here, our next piano, and today in the same church that uh, we just had the last piano at. Uh, is another Hamilton Baldwin um, studio piano. So as you can see, the the top comes up the same way. So you can see from a side view here, the um, the top raises up, and then there's this lid prop that's uh, built in down here at the end. So um, same way. Um, this one I want to just show you a little bit. So usually what I'll do is um, a lot of pianos that I tune, I'll I'll just kind of quick check the regulation, see how it is. Um, um, and make suggestions if I feel the situation is is right. But uh, you know we've we've got some videos on different regulation procedures. We talk about um, lost motion, um, let off, and that kind of thing. But uh, you know, so the first couple things I usually check are just the uh, the lost motion and the and the um, the let off because those are two major things. If you look at this. So if you look at that back check right there, you can see that that uh, wiggles quite a bit. That's probably quite a bit, but uh, this time of year it's probably not too unusual. And it's actually not consistent. If I go from one key to the next, there will be less or more if I do see like this one down here. Wiggles just barely at all. So that one's just about right, but it's not consistent from one key to the next. The other thing is the, um, is the let off. If we look at the... Oh, here we go. If we look look where the where the key lets off in relation to the string, okay, it's it's quite a ways from the string before it lets off. Much further than an eighth inch, anyways. I would say it's 
least a quarter inch or more in any case. So, um, you know, in some cases anyways, I would uh, suggest having regulation done on a piano like this. And again, it's not real consistent. Some are a little bit closer, but overall they're, they're, they're all letting off quite a ways from the quite much further from the string than they should to have uh, the right amount of, fish, of efficiency. And of course this varies um, seasonally too, so you want to you take into consideration what uh, time of the year it is. You know, in the summertime, you know, the regulation adjustments are going to be different than they are in the middle of the winter when it's really cold and dry. Um, so you want to keep that in mind. But, um, you know, so, so just uh, those are some things I'll check. I'll, I'll, I'll look at the checking distance, which that looks to be pretty good in this piano. That one's really close, but so you know, if I did some regulation adjustments, I'd go through quick and um, adjust the the back checking distance as well. But um, usually, usually lost motion and um, let off, uh, you know, are are the biggest things you know that you can do fairly quickly without uh, spending too much, and it makes a big difference for for the pianos. So um, I'll check those things. But I just wanted to show you that on this piano that I'm getting ready to tune here. Here's the third piano I'm going to be tuning at this church uh, today. This is a this is the piano in the sanctuary. It's a Boston Grand piano. Um, let's see, it looks like a model GP163. So it's about a five four, I think, is the model size that this uh, piano is. But um, uh, one interesting thing you might want to be aware of, um, and this is just my personal uh, preference, but when I've got um, Generally, when I've got uh, several pianos or more than one piano in um, the same location, what I'd like to do, and I don't know if others do this too, but um, I like to save the best pianos for last. Um, just uh, more like, uh, more so because um, if there's uh, extra work to do, and usually it's the more important piano that's um, that's the better piano if it needs other adjustments or something. I make sure I save enough time to do that, such, such as um, small regulation things or if there's a sticking key or um, small um, voicing issues that need to be taken care of, I can save um, enough time that I have for um, for that most important piano to do it or done. Um, I'll still cover the most urgent things on the other pianos, but um, you know, make sure I, I save the time for for those things on the piano that it's the most important for so uh, so I'm going to be tuning this today it gets tuned uh, at least probably I'd say at least three times a year it seems like so um, it uh, it uh, gets pretty regular care so